and welcome back to What's Cooking. I'm your host, Patricia Katsia, and I am happy to say that today in the kitchen, we will be preparing one of my favorite dishes, and it's quite an easy dish to make for the whole family. We will be making a nice, cheesy, delicious lasagna today with none other than a guest that I am excited to introduce to you, the digital marketer for Hilton Hotel itself. So before I dive into all of that, before we get to make this delicious dish, we would just like to thank Kitchen82 for hosting us, as well as Coca-Cola and Metro Fresh for sponsoring this episode. And as promised, we're back here in the kitchen and I am so excited to introduce today's guest. As mentioned earlier, she's the digital marketer for Hilton Hotel and she's going to tell us more about what it means to be a part of this brand and all the other ventures that this brand is going into. So welcome to my kitchen, Ms. Jomri Damasek Ortner. Welcome, Jomri, to What's Cooking. Thank you so much for having me, Patricia. I am so excited to dive into, like we said, we're making lasagna today, mm -hmm. and we're getting to know Jomri as Jomri, the digital marketer, as Jomri, the soon-to-be graduate, soon-to-be anything and everything there in the world. So we're excited to get into it. Mm -hmm. But before we get to this delicious dish, why don't you introduce yourself to our guests so that they can just know who you are. The floor is yours. Hi everyone that's watching. My name is Jo Marie Damasep Ordner. I am the digital marketing coordinator for Hilton Hotel and Hilton Garden Inn. I'm currently pursuing my honors degree in marketing at NUST and I'm really excited for this new journey. Awesome. So you mentioned the Hilton Garden Inn. A lot of people don't know much about that. We all just know the Hilton Hotel, the brand, the big the big hotel that everyone just loves visiting, especially the restaurant, I must say. Mm -hmm. That is like one of my go-to places. But tell us a bit more about the Garden Inn. What is this and what, of what you know, ventures can you offer people, Namibians and tourists especially? So the Hilton Garden Inn is a three-star hotel right next to Hilton Hotel. It's more like a sister hotel to Hilton. It's central, which makes it really easy for people to access it. The public and also our tourists at large. Okay, that sounds interesting. Me personally, I've never heard of, of the Garden Inn, but definitely uh, what's cooking has to pop in there, maybe just see what it looks like. Because I do know, I do personally for me, I like to read reviews when it comes to restaurants specifically because I'm a picky eater. <laughs> so Hilton Hotel is one of my favorites because it's very rare that you see a bad review mm -hmm. when it comes to the restaurant service, the food. So I am curious to go for myself to the inn to just see like what the Garden Inn has to offer, especially when it comes to food because when I'm hosting a cooking show, I have to try all the food out there and just let my viewers know what's the next big thing. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why you haven't heard of it yet is because it just recently opened yes. in January and the Pekuta restaurant honestly has the best food. Mm. I've eaten there before. Okay. I've created content for our social media as well with the food and it's out of this world. Okay guys, so now you know that Jomari is recommending this place with like high ratings. So maybe <laughs> what's cooking will definitely pop there. Mm. See something on our socials just to see what it's like, you know. We'd love to host you. Honestly, great stuff. But as I mentioned earlier, you are recently going to be a graduate. I was taking mm. end of April. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more? What degree is this and where did you study? And like, what was this journey like to get this degree? All right, so I just completed my um, bachelor's degree in media and journalism technology. I majored in public relations. Okay. I think the more you get into it, it becomes really, really a challenge. It can become really hectic, but honestly, just having a clear mind, just being focused, mm -hmm. really just allows you to go through the whole entire journey. I have really, really enjoyed the journey so far. And now I'm doing my honors degree, which is so much better. And it just gives me a different perspective. It adds on to what I've already been um, exposed to. Yeah. Awesome, that's great. Before we continue, I think it's time that we start chopping mm. and start prepping for what's to be in this pan. So, as usual, I'm just your assistant. Mm -hmm. I'm here to make your dish. So, head chef, yes. let me assist you. Tell me what you need me to chop, cut, mix, whatever it is. I think for now, let's just start with our onions. We already washed our hands. 
and we are ready to get into it. That your advice is just for for those who are trying to balance this time management, definitely, and knowing what's your priority. All right. So obviously, priorities differ from person to person. Yeah. But having a proper plan, I usually like to take my my Sundays out to just plan for the week ahead. Yeah. It allows me to just get a perspective, know what. Um, when and where I can relax and just mm -hmm. take a breather. But it really also just allows me to keep up with what's happening at school, what I need to do for work. And it yeah. makes life so much easier because then I'm not overwhelmed by anything. Yeah. So yeah, just getting a proper plan for yourself that works. Yes, that, that's actually great advice because I know it's quite difficult. The working life is more demanding Ooh. than anyone ever I must prepares say, you. Mm -hmm. Especially coming out of university, I think you're right, nobody really ever prepares you for what's about to hit um, you. Yeah, that's that's true. Because I know it's been quite a struggle for me to find that work student life balance. It's it's so crazy. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fry our if I'm not mistaken, Chef, we're gonna fry our green pepper yes. with our almost called this mince. <laughs> with our <laughs> onions and our mince and then we have a variety of spices that I want to dig into. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, we're just going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. And as you can see, we're back here after this break and we got down and dirty with this. If you can see, my head chef even <laughs> took off the jacket because we had to dig in here to mm -hmm. really make this lasagna good for us. So Jomri, what have we been doing in this break? So, so during our break, we grated, grated our cheese and it's ready to go. We also put... Um, some of our potatoes in the pan, got them to a soft boil. We chopped them up and now we just gonna spice them. Spice them up. Yeah. And then we also have our lasagna sheets ready on the plate to be placed in our pan. And we also got our mince as before the break we chopped up some onions, some green pepper, we threw in a bunch of spices, our parsley, our mince spice, we got some salt and pepper, of course. We got some tomato sauce just mm -hmm. to bring it, you know, some juiciness to it. So now to the best part. The white sauce. The white sauce. Definitely. So let's get the right So we're just going to remove this. So how we're going to start this, we're going to get half of this butter mm -hmm. and melt it. Awesome. Go in. Let's start with this. Because usually how I make my white sauce is I just play around with the butter and the, the what do you call it? The, I want to say powder for some reason, the butter and the flour. The flour. I play around with the butter and the flour to get the right texture that I want. Mm -hmm. Put that on for us. So before the break, we got to know how Jo Marie um, balances the work and study life. Mm -hmm. You say that you are now chasing, you're chasing your degree, your honors degree at NAS. Yep. How has that been for you? Like, is compared to getting your degree itself and now getting your honors, what's the difference for you? I think there's definitely a change in demand in terms of, okay. I think um, with the with the honors degree, it's a bit more challenging. Okay. You are sense. obviously on a whole new level. I'm doing this marketing degree for the very first time, and it's a bit different from the PR that yeah. I did in the previous year. It's been such a wonderful experience, actually. I'm learning so much from my lecturers, mm -hmm. and I'm having so much fun. Awesome. That sounds great. I mean, of course, marketing, not marketing, but honors degree would be expected to be more difficult than mm -hmm. your usual If I'm not mistaken, honors is more research-based. Very much so. And I think that's the number one challenge that we face as, you know, people that are um, venturing into this new degree. Yeah. The research has you by the neck. <laughs> Honestly, I can imagine. I feel like that's the number one thing that you're challenged with. However, it's a really wonderful journey. You learn so much and so many skills that you get to use yeah. in your career. That's great. So before we continue with that, Jeremy, I understand that before you stepped into, let's say, the grown-up world, the, oh. the grown-up world now where you're a working Child. woman, you used to be a YouTuber or you are still in that field or is it 
Can you tell us more about that part of your life? So I started YouTube, I think, about two years ago. The journey has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much about myself and just the people around me. Um, this year, I took a different um, step into the YouTube um, okay. journey. I started creating content that, that I relate with a bit more. Like the, the, the flower. The flower. I'll focus on the pattern once it's not that we can throw in your flower. So has YouTube being a Good. YouTuber always okay. always been a part of the plan? Or did it just is it just something that you just decided one day I'll just wake up and start YouTubing? So growing up I used to watch a lot of YouTube. This was now the time of Eva Kutowski, a lot of these American YouTubers. Mm. And YouTube wasn't really a thing for us in Africa at the time. Yeah. So once it became a popular um, you were app, like, I'm jumping, I'm jumping on this. But I also didn't want to jump prematurely. Yeah. I don't want to jump when I didn't have the right equipment. And you know, I watch so many videos and they always say you will never really get it right. So just start. I started my journey. It has been wonderful. But I'm sure as all of us know, doing YouTube in Namibia has a lot of challenges. Monetization is not as easy as other countries. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a limitation that we have and it makes it difficult for us to actually pursue it as a whole entire career. Yeah. Hence why so many YouTubers actually stop. Yeah. So for me, it has become more of a time to relax and just unwind and just, just share. Not yeah. really for monetization purposes, but it would have been a nice, you know, experience. Yeah. But I'm not gonna stop right now. I think I'm just taking a bit of a hiatus or like a break. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but, but I focus on my career. Yes, exactly. We need to see prioritize for a second, especially with school now. As we said, that honors is way more difficult Very than much. a degree. So if you had to focus so much on your YouTubing, it would have been three ways now. Mm -hmm. Your attention needs to be split into th third. And you barely get time for yourself, eh? Because now people become so attached to you, they want you to constantly create content mm -hmm. on social media, on YouTube, and there's this constant demand for you uploading. Yeah. And it becomes quite a challenge because you can't keep up with that anymore at the same pace, especially. Yeah. And it makes it really difficult for you to constantly upload when you are trying to make it in yeah. this industry that I mean it's quite a demanding industry it's quite a challenge I can everyone imagine. wants a piece of the cake so <laughs> you really need to prioritize get a lot of some milk in here to get that right. texture that we want so it's the melting of the butter mm -hmm. then some flour and then you just throw in milk little by little until you get the texture that you want so Jomri, let's talk about high school, Jomri. Because <laughs> I always feel like that's the stage of your life where you really get to know who you are and throw in some more milk. So you can just keep the milk in your hands because we're going to throw in a lot. In high school, Jomri, did you always know that this was the industry that she was going to dive into? I definitely think um, it was, but not really until later on in my high school career in grade 11 or so. Mm -hmm. Initially, I wanted to become a medical doctor which wow. didn't work out obviously <laughs> and i'm really glad it didn't because i got into this new path and i just discovered how much i love it and i would not trade it for anything in the world so i love it so much wow this okay. opens to so move many from doors. a medical doctor to a journalist way more more coming <laughs> yeah it's quite i really enjoyed um english i had on higher level okay. so i really enjoyed um writing essays and just being creative with my with my mind and just my words so yeah. then eventually I started to research more mm -hmm. on different careers that were available for me I think also at that time I, I felt quite limited because people only considered medicine law or engineering yeah so me, like a, a getting, viable yeah, career path. me getting into this new industry my parents felt like that was quite a concern for them how is they also because they didn't understand it yeah they didn't they kept asking me how I'm gonna, you know, finance all of these things. How am I gonna make it? Because there are not a lot of job opportunities. Exactly. However, right now, we are on demand. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah, it is quite. When the thing is, when it comes to journalism or communication in general, there's a lot of opportunities. Mm. You just need to be very smart with where you study, what you major in, and networking is a vital part mm -hmm. of I, this. Mm, I think also for me, just majoring in public relations has opened so many doors for me because I can be at any company yeah. and take up space. So I think we gotta switch my arm. This is, you really need to be strong <laughs> if you're going to, to do this, honestly. <laughs> so, Jomri, 
This should have been the first question, honestly. When did you grow up? Are you a Vandu girl, a coast girl? I'm a coastal girly. Okay, so I'm assuming Swak of Moon? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have a Swak of Moon girly that came to take over Vinduk. How is, what was the change? You finished high school in Swak of Moon and then you came here for university. Yep. How would you describe the, the change in lifestyle compared to moving from Swak of Moon, which is small, quiet, mm. quiet town? I think the city is way more um, busy. Mm -hmm. It's quite a lifestyle that you need to be prepared for, but many aren't. And that's why you see so many people just, you know, being consumed by it so much and making the wrong decisions. Yeah. Because it's such a fast-paced um, Yeah, it's a place. very fast-paced However, I think I stayed grounded. I knew what I came here for. Yeah. And ever since, I've just been staying in my own lane. Yeah, if you know what you're here for and if you stay focused, <laughs> you'll get there. Yeah, I think we can... Put in a teaspoon of sugar, just a little bit, and the salt, and then the sh this is done. Nice okay. and, you know, creamy white sauce. I always like it to be just a little bit sweet. Mm -hmm. and just to mix nice with, the, with our mints and the spices and the potatoes. I always add potatoes and I love it, and I love that you're adding potatoes, because starch it is just, just hey, fun. Yeah. Potatoes make Ooh. everything better. Okay. You know, just put in a little bit in there. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just like this half of the spoon. spoon. Just half of the spoon. <laughs> yeah, that should work. And then we need a little bit of salt. And then we can start packaging our lasagna. Okay, Chao Marie, it's now the best part. We get to package our lasagna. So, mince first. Got our mince in here. I think you can do the honors of the sheets, laying mm -hmm. it out for us. I spiced our potatoes quite lovely with a lot of salt. <laughs> I hope it balances out with the sweetness of everything. I think you just need to trust the process at this point. <laughs> I know these sheets are a bit tricky because I always struggle with them because they stick together. Mm -hmm. But I think these ones, they look promising, don't they? I'll just give you a hand there. This is why it's important to have an assistant in the kitchen. Just to help with this, all of this. This is really sticky. I usually go with spaghetti. Me too. But I wanted or to... Or like a, a good mac. Yeah. Macaroni. Put that one. Mm -hmm. Like so, great. We make a great team. Let's we need <laughs> this very salty potatoes that we <laughs> boiled with so much love that it broke into a million pieces. But, and I'm sure the chefs all over the world are questioning our methods at this moment. This is, I like lasagna, let me do it the way I want to. Vibes. Now, it's time for our white sauce. I want to make sure everyone gets a bit of white sauce everywhere. <laughs> uh, my favorite part about making the white sauce, I know I'm not supposed to say this on TV, but it's the licking out of the pan afterwards. <laughs> Because it's so sweet and it's just so delicious. I just, I just need to do that. It's a tradition, honestly. So I really want to just taste it because I've never had it with this. With the white sauce mm -hmm. from scratch, you see? And this is your recipe. So you're actually challenging yourself mm -hmm. here. <laughs> well, if what's cooking is anything, it is a show where you get to step out of your comfort zone if you like to. And if this recipe is a success, then we just taught Namibia how to make white sauce in our way of making white sauce. Okay, the last process is the cheese. I think we get a little bit more in there. Can we tell us a little bit more about your life, your siblings? Like you're in the communication sector. Your siblings, do you have a younger brother, younger sister, older brother? So I have a younger brother. He is not as young anymore. <laughs> and honestly, he's a really great person. He's now venturing into his own career, which I'm really excited for, and I just get to be part of it. That's cool. I love it when I see siblings just supporting each other and just loving each other. And he, I'm assuming he's also as supportive towards mm -hmm. your career. Absolutely. I mean, if I was going to be a younger brother, younger sister to anyone, I would be super proud of my siblings if they had to achieve anything in life that is this great. I mm -hmm. mean, this is your first non-intern related job then you yep. put on some cheese do the honors because we're at the last stage of our lasagna guys this looks good honestly i doubt it us for a second <sighs> but i think i think you need to trust the process because <laughs> at the end of the day you don't really know how it's gonna end up 
you know, during the process, but eventually it comes together. If anything has cheese on it, it's gonna be good. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just a known fact. And you can put as, mi as much cheese on this lasagna as you want. And that, guys, is Jo Marie and Patricia's own version of cheesy lasagna, as mm -hmm. you can see. We're gonna pop this in the oven, and when we're back, we get to eat this. So guys, we'll be right back after this break. So we got this delicious lasagna out of the oven and um, I may say this looks delicious. It really, really does. And I can't so wait so much fun digging making this with you. Me too actually, Patricia. So do you want to do the honors or should, shall I? Mm, do let do me it? do that for us. Go ahead. So Jomar is going to serve <laughs> us this delicious mm -hmm. mayo. Oh. I'm actually very curious with the white sauce and everything that we've been doing. So get that. Ooh, when the white sauce does that, it just makes me want to eat it straight out of the pan, honestly. <laughs> Ooh, perfect, you know, the cheesiness. It's, what, it's what's winning. It's what's winning at this dish. So we're dished up and we're all ready, but of course, any meal, no meal, is perfect without a lot of cold Coke to drink with it. So let's open up this. Oh, that sound. The sound. Get us a nice cold Coke. So Jamri, I just really want to know, I know nothing about digital marketing. What does it mean to be a digital marketer? Like, what are your responsibilities in the office? So my responsibilities mainly entail um, social media management, content, cheers, cheers, <laughs> content creation, um, SEO optimization, and yeah, coming up with marketing strategies for like online. Yeah. So that's what it really mean, uh, entails. Is it safe to assume that a digital marketer needs to stay up to date with trends on social absolutely, media? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, because that really allows you to do your job better. Okay, so is that not time consuming to constantly, you know, be up to date on what's trending on TikTok, what's trending on Instagram? I think also when you're just really into what you do, mm. it comes naturally. You don't really need to be required or asked to be up to date with certain things it already comes naturally because you're really interested and you're really invested okay, that makes in sense. your career are you ready to take the first bite i am <laughs> when i say that this sauce and the cheese is just making it very appealing are you ready here goes nothing <laughs> mm. The white sauce isn't as sweet as what I would have wanted it, but it works. I love it. It's so good. It works. Mm -hmm. And with the Coke, it tastes even better, honestly. So if you, if there are any young, or young aspiring youth who are trying to pursue a career within this space, what advice can you give them in terms of just, you know, in any career, you do balance a lot of things, personal life, whether it's personal life and study life or married life or just simply your health in general as well. Just to keep yourself sane within the field, you know, looking at your physical, your mental health, emotional health, what advice can you give to them? I always say it doesn't get easier. When you're in university, you're going to think you're overwhelmed because you're doing your studies. Five years from then, you're going to get married, start having a family, it never gets easier. Yeah. It all just depends on how well you plan your time. Time management is really important. And just having a proper plan for yourself. Making sure that you take the necessary breaks when you need to. Yes. And spend time with your family and friends just to unwind. You know, I have to ask, besides lasagna, which you're obviously good at making, what is your easy go-to snack? Because I know life can get very busy. Especially if it's a life where you need to constantly be up to date with what's happening <laughs> around you. What is that one thing you just grab or you just, when you're in the shop, it's like, I need to have this with me. Whether it's type of energy drink, whether it's just your favorite chocolate, something that is just when you go to the shop or when you leave the house, this thing must be there with you. That is, I think with a really busy schedule, having noodles, 
Does it? <laughs> the two minute noodles it to the rescue. <laughs> I can't live without it actually. So, so easy quick meal. Mm -hmm. And the thing with two minute noodles, you can play around with it, you know. <laughs> If you have that pura wash, uh, the mm -hmm. Russians just like laying there, you can just fry them up a bit and add them there. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so Jeremy, before we let you go and before we go off camera to eat the rest of this lasagna, if our viewers out there want to reach out to you, whether it's for advice, whether it's to ask more questions about the Garden Inn at Hilton, where can they get to contact you? So if you're interested in getting to know more about the Hilton Hotel or Hilton Garden Inn itself, it does have social media platforms. So on Instagram, you can just search Hilton Garden Inn, Winduk, or Hilton Hotel Winduk. And for me personally, you can find me at underscore Jo Marie underscore O. Great. I think definitely our viewers have to check out this in. If it's anything compared to Hilton Hotel itself, it's definitely a go-to space. Absolutely. But I think it's time for us to say bye to our viewers because I need to finish this. And this Coke is too appetizing to just let go like this. So that's it from me and Jo Marie. We will see you next time on What's Cooking. Thank you for having me. What an amazing, amazing episode with Jo Marie, where we got to know the digital marketing space of Hilton Hotel, what it meant to be a YouTuber as the coastal hunt told us everything there is to know about balancing the study life and work life. And we made delicious lasagna, guys. This recipe is one that you have to watch over and over again to master this white sauce that we got today. But don't be sad as we say goodbyes. What's Cooking will be back again next week, Friday, same place, same time. That's it from me.